Oh, sh <laughs> so, very quickly, very easily, there is a very simple way of taking large numbers of camera raw files and exporting them to JPEGs. Okay, it's really easy. Now, they won't be super small, so if you're trying to do something for, um, um, like emails or something like that, maybe still not so good. But camera raw files, if you don't have camera raw plugins or software, special software on your computer home, you may or may not be able to actually view and edit those. So sometimes it's nice to have JPEGs. I do this to upload uh, files to for online storage. I'll keep like JPEGs, which aren't quite as good as camera raws, but I'll keep them online uh, as backups. So all you got to do is you just take a whole stack of camera raw files. Okay. Now this doesn't work with Photoshop stuff. Okay. Well, I'll just select this. I've got 31. You could do 100. You could do 200. It doesn't matter. And you right click and you say open in camera raw. Now if you have your files in a library application like Lightroom uh, or something along those lines, and this is moot, but we're not using Lightroom here. So you know, if you just have Photoshop and you don't use Lightroom at all and you've got a large group of photographs in a folder that you want to convert to JPEGs because you want to take them home with you or whatever, here you go. So then all you got to do, make sure they're all edited, you go up to this little menu here, you click select all, and then you go down here and you hit click save images. And then what's going to happen is you're going to uh, get a little dialog box and uh, you, you want to save in a new location probably so that they, uh, you know, that they're, um, you know, not uh, in the same place. So it'll be easier for you to find them. So then I'll just do this and I'll just, uh, this is a firewood and I'll just call it JPEGs. So firewood JPEGs, oh, caps lock was on, I hate that. Okay, just like that, and then I'll open that, I'll select that folder, and then I just keep the document name the same, and then right here where it says file extension, I'm going to choose JPEG. And so now, it gives me a series of options, how, you know, how, how, what quality you want them to be at, so how high you want the uh, quality to be, set it to maximum, uh, if you really want the highest quality, what the color space is supposed to be. Now for this class, you've been shooting in Adobe RGB, um, or uh, some of the newer cameras may be set to Pro Photo. Adobe RGB is pretty much your standard, but you can, you can go, I, I always choose either Adobe RGB or Pro Photo depending upon what I was photographing. This actually, these photographs are from an older camera before Pro Photo was a selectable um, option on the cameras, so they were all shot in Adobe RGB, so I'm going to keep Adobe RGB. And then you can resize them if you want probably don't want to do that, but if you did, you check that box and you can set your maximum height and your maximum uh, resolution, okay? Um, and you can also check don't enlarge. I recommend that. You don't want to res them up because that just decreases, it doesn't increase quality, it only increases the number of pixels and, and doesn't help you in any way, shape, or form. But we'll just say you don't want to resize them and once you're done, you just click save. And so what's going to happen, you can see it's doing, it says 31 remaining, 30 remaining, um, and uh, my picture software is dying. Um, but it uses a lot of processor power, but it tells you when they're done. It'll say zero remaining, and you're finished. In fact, you can click on this, and it gives you a process set up here, and it tells you which ones are done and which ones are not. And then if you just go to the folder, so I put them on the C drive here. You can see that this folder is now having all the JPEGs are being uh, saved into it. And you can see that they're JPEG files, not camera raw files. And you can also see that they're a lot smaller. So if I take a look here, this is 4,000 kilobyte, 4, kilobytes, which is basically 4 megabytes. Okay, And uh, let's see, oh, this is done, so I can click done. And just out of curiosity, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on this one. And uh, the size of this raw file is 20 megabytes. So I've basically, uh, you know, effectively, I've cut the size by one eighth. Okay, so I've, I've cut the size in an eighth by making it a JPEG. Now I have reduced the quality. JPEG throws away data. It's what we call a lossy compression system. You actually lose color. You lose some pixels. Um, whether or not you be, are able to see it. Probably not, okay, until you start editing. And if you need to start editing pretty hardcore, then sometimes you'll start realizing that you lost some data. But other than that, it's pretty simple to do. 
and you get a good quality JPEG out of that and you take your file size down by an eighth and you can throw these on your iPhone or on a flash drive and take them home or throw them online in an online backup system and you can fit eight times as many images there. But like I said, you are losing quality. You're not saving the originals. So if you've got the space, saving your camera raw files is always the best option. Now, one last thing is if you've got a Photoshop file, okay, that you have to do in Photoshop. You have to open it in Photoshop, go File, Save As, and save it as a JPEG manually. Um, and that's, again, where something like Lightroom will make things a lot better and easier because you can export out of Lightroom like, like that, you know but it's very really simple. But does that make sense from Camera Raw how to do that? Okay, that's, that's all I got.